case, it's the greater Middle East. And, and Saddam Hussein for years has given cover and has given support, uh, just as Syria has given cover and given support for a variety of terrorist organizations which have struck American assets both here and abroad. Uh, and they continue to do so. Um, there was every indication through our, our intelligence and through other intelligence agencies in the Western world, uh, through the Brits, uh, through the French, through the Australians, and through the Germans, and through m many others. And, and it was not just the United States, quote unquote, or so-called made an Iraqi evasion. It, it, it was, in fact, a coalition with uh, many Eastern, Europe country, Eastern European countries and Western European countries. And um, certainly at that time, it's always, remember, it's always easy to be a Monday morning quarterback and say, well, after the fact, we didn't find weapons of mass destruction. So we had every reason to believe, and so did inspectors did, that Saddam Hussein had significant stockpiles of chemical and biological weaponry, and we knew he used them against his own people in, in point in time. So uh, uh, given that point in time, it, it, it did make sense to attack that particular region of the world, because it was not just to go after, if in fact you were just looking at the nationality of who struck the World Trade Center, then the majority was Saudis. Why not attack Saudi Arabia? Well, we live in a very sophisticated world. We live in a world where we have relationships. Sometimes the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And we have to operate underneath that. Certainly you heard Obama say, well, uh, if I knew um, this, uh, if um, Osama bin Laden and Musharraf wasn't going after him, I would invade or bomb Pakistan or attack Pakistan. That's a naive approach to international politics. You sometimes have to go to bed with people you don't like and you mistrust. Sometimes, unfortunately, you get blowback and it blows back in your face, as well as we supported the Mujahideen who were fighting the Soviet Union and we would do anything to destroy the Soviet Union. Uh, and we, we supported that and it eventually came back at us. Uh, did we do it intentionally? I don't believe so. I don't think there's anyone in this room who thinks that anybody who is a member and operative in the Central Intelligence Agency at the time thought that this would happen. If they did, would that what they wanted for the United States? Obviously not. You know, you cannot quote people back, our founding fathers, and find something in here about democracy or some other bit about this. You have to look at a real situation. A real situation oftentimes is under the heat of battle, under fire, and you have to make split decisions. We as a country can't sit back and ponder something and ruminate and email and send faxes. Sometimes it calls for action, and sometimes that action unfortunately blows back in our face. Mr. Horton, two minutes. Scott Ritter, the former UN weapons inspector, gave a speech in Tokyo, Japan, one day after Colin Powell's famous speech before the UN, where he debunked every single part of it. The aluminum tubes that must be for a nuclear centrifuge program, that had been debunked since September 2002 in the Washington Post. The Niger uranium documents were uh, sworn against by Mohamed El Baradi, the head of the Atomic Energy Agency, uh, in February of 2003. That was their two big pieces of evidence of a nuclear weapons program in Iraq, right there. And then Dick Cheney, after that, of course, went on Meet the Press and said, we believe that Saddam Hussein has, in fact, reconstituted nuclear weapons. First of all, he never had them in the first place to constitute. Secondly, uh, no, he had not reconstituted them. And there were a lot of people all over the world who knew that, including Mohammed El Baradi, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency. and. Uh, anyone who got a copy of Saddam Hussein's 12,000 page report to the UN before uh, American spy team broke in and stole it. Um, uh, a variety of terrorist groups is a nice way to say, I don't want to have to define the differences between any terrorist groups. So what if Ayman al-Zawahiri absolutely despises the mullahs in Iran and only denounced them for cooperating with us earlier this week? There are all the Islamo-fascists and Hezbollah and Hamas and the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade and the Muslim Brotherhood. And in fact, any stateless group of Muslims anywhere are all one big enemy that we have to fight. And that is a big mistake because rather than dividing our enemies, uh, we're pushing them together. Uh, and in fact, making enemies out of people who are not our enemies, such as the people of Iraq. And by the way, of course, I never suggested we should have invaded Saudi Arabia. I was trying to suggest that we should not have occupied 
Saudi Arabia for all that time. And also, it's not the same thing as blaming a rape victim, blaming America for the attack of September 11th. Any cop investigating a crime tries to find out the motive of the people who did it. And we don't all say that every cop trying to solve a crime is only trying to blame the victim for trying to find the motive. Uh, that's just uh, silly and a red herring, of course. Next question. Uh, Dr. Kushner, many people question whether the USA Patriot Act is constitutional, especially because of its eavesdropping and information collecting provisions. Is the Patriot Act constitutional, and is it necessary for U.S. national security? I believe it's constitutional, and I believe it's definitely necessary for our security. And I'll, I'll give you some reasons why. Uh, technology has changed dramatically over the years, and it's put law enforcement in a very awkward position. When we had landlines which were tied to one address with one phone, where it was a cord, and some of us are old enough to remember before cell phones where you had a cord into, a, uh, into the wall, and that was it, and you, and you got a search warrant, and you were able to tap that phone. It was a different era. But we live in a very modern world where we have cell phones, we have throwaway cell phones, and we have uh, performed roving wiretaps because we have to be one step ahead of the bad guys who constantly do this to us. And so the Patriot Act allows this. We have a sneak and peek with the Patriot Act. We're allowed now uh, to go inside uh, and confiscate um, material on someone's computer without telling them if it's considered to be for a national emergency. I think this is totally necessary in the world that we live in. Certainly, if it was a perfect world and we didn't have the advent of uh, technology and we weren't threatened by Islamic fascists and Islamo-fascism, uh, I would say the Patriot Act wasn't necessary. There's sunset provisions for it. Uh, it, it is certainly something that uh, needs to be reconsidered after a period of time. And I'm a firm believer in our democracy uh, and our Constitution. And, and I really firmly uh, state this to anyone. If anyone knows of anybody who has been harmed by the USA Patriot Act, has been really harmed in terms of making a living or has wasn't able to board a plane or they have snuck into their house and they confiscated their computer, you know, j just give the ACLU a call or uh, the Council of American Islamic Relations a call. Ring them up, and I'm sure they'll offend you in court. And, and our courts are, are, are totally uh, available to any uh, person here in this country who feels they've been damaged by that. So w when the other side often says that it's been we've taken us down a slippery slope uh, to losing our, our, our constitutional privileges and our rights under the Bill of Rights, my answer to them is name individuals. Cut, give me a name of an individual. Give me a name of a, a group, not just a broad name. Well, every Muslim was harmed because of the USA Patriot Act. Or, you know, uh, getting on a plane, everybody is searched. Hey, that's the world we live in. It's a necessary evil. And the USA Patriot Act is certainly a necessary evil in I'm certain here, if you had the Attorney General, he wouldn't say it the way I just did, a necessary evil, but I'm, I'm being quite frank with you. I do believe it's necessary in the world we live in. And, and I don't see where it harms us. I don't see where it takes us down that slippery slope for losing our freedoms. I don't think it makes us worse of a people. I, I do not think it's going to erode any other freedoms that we hold near and dear in this country. I, I think it's a, a dramatic step that had to be taken given what happened on 9-11. The, the country was asleep, it was hit on 9-11, and it's still at risk, and we need to have law enforcement and our intelligence agencies, certainly monitored under certain uh, senses, but I, I do believe the courts can do that at times if somebody was harmed by the Patriot Act. And I, I fully support it, and I, I think the Congress of the United States does, and I think the majority of the American people do. Because I, I do think, just as when uh, back in the 70s when the federal agencies such as the FBI uh, were using too much discretion in opening up case files, there was a significant reaction in this country and the pendulum swung the other way and the Levy amendments occurred. And, and what happened on the Attorney General Levy was you couldn't open up a case against somebody unless you crossed that criminal predicate and where you had something taking place or you had something actually going to happen and you had the ticking bomb. 
And, and so we were asleep before 9-11. We had no intelligence. We had no intelligence capabilities. We couldn't infiltrate certain areas which were problematic to the security of this country.